Hi there, and welcome to the 20-Minute Mode, a Verloop.io podcast. Today, we're talking to one of the stalwarts of the customer support industry, a man who leads customer support for a $120 million organization. Hi, I'm Sandeep, and I currently lead the customer support team at Furlenko. Sandeep joins us today to talk about Furlenko. Literally zero at one point in time from customers. The importance of great customer experience to a startup. You know, literally 360 degree uh, sphere of data is available. And how the company navigated the COVID-19 pandemic. For nearly two months, I think there was hardly any operations. You've made the move from several high profile enterprise companies to your first startup. How's that been for you? Uh, I joined for Lenko around two years back, and since then it has been a great journey. Uh, this was my first uh, stint with the startup. I have only worked with MNCs prior to working with for Lenko, but it has been great experience getting to understand how startups work, how dynamic the work culture is, and uh, obviously startups bring with themselves a tremendous opportunities. There are a lot of things which you can explore and you can do, and so I think you know I have become really a fan of uh, working with startups. And a lot of people make this move. In fact, Furlenko was started because of an experience your CEO, Ajit Kariprabhna, had while moving from the States to India. You know, when we spoke to our founder, Ajit, and his vision, like how he started Furlenko, when he moved from US to India, he had to sell off his furniture worth $5,000 for nearly $300 to $400, which was kind of not even 10%. And that's what made him feel that there should be a solution around it. There should be something which should be done so that customers who actually are buying furniture and probably selling them off for pennies do not incur such huge losses. And that's where the thought of of starting with a rental business of furniture got initiated do you think your corporate experience gives you an edge in startups do you think it helps you hire better for example see i have worked in both mnc's uh, and now with startups and, and in mnc's i think they primarily try to go for a person who is 100% expert in one particular subject matter so that's where i think having a team of all rounders do help but at the same time the way i operate here is that all all the team members who report into me in fact all my managers the the thing which i try here is that uh, while they can be a subject matter expertise in one particular uh, domain or section of the fair of work which we do but at the end of it they need to be all rounded they should be able to help out each other if in case there is a requirement so we develop a team of all rounders who are expert in their individual field Why is customer support so important for a subscription based business like yours? How do you get your team to buy into that? Our, our focus is only one. How can we provide great customer experience? I think everyone in Perlenko not just in customer support team but all the leaders across departments to our VPs to our CEOs or CEOs I think everyone is obsessed with customer experience. And I think uh, being a subscription service company I think it's all the more important. But for us to make uh, any kind of profit you know, we need to ensure that the customer stays with us for longer. And one a substantial power which Uh, subscription business gives to customers is the power to unsubscribe you are you are not happy with our services or product you simply can say take your products and get lost and customers can use that power at any time they say that okay i am not under any obligation to use your services and that makes all the more important for any company which is into subscription kind of business to provide absolutely great customer experience we just cannot fault it here given that a majority of the sales that happens in the furniture market come from the unorganized sector it's safe to say i think that your primary rivals are not other furniture rental companies they're sort of the incumbent market at large what are the pros and cons of that you think uh uh one of the things about buying is that you are stuck with it now there might be a time that we buy a furniture like obviously when i started my career my earning was comparatively way less than what i am probably making today so what furniture i would have got probably 10 15 years back i would not be happy with that kind of furniture and if you have seen most of indian families once a furniture is bought more or less it stays with us for a really long time now while we do upgrade our lifestyle with period of time you probably will buy a new house a bigger house probably a uh, more swankier car but the bed would remain more or less same or the sofa would remain more or less same okay and i think that's what uh, for lenko is trying to change that uh, you know we are giving you that kind of freedom to our customers that you need not be stuck with the same set of furniture for a really long time
and i think that's where uh, while it is a new concept altogether initially it was uh, if you compare only in the monetary terms a uh, lot of people say okay probably it might be useful for people who relocate every year or so but uh, now we are getting a lot of customers who are uh, married well into their 30s and all and they are renting furniture because people want to experiment people want to live their life today people want to have more options available at their disposal and we provide one such service called uh, swap like you know if you want to change your uh, bed which you are using or the sofa which you are using you can just select another design another product opt for swap service and we will pick up the previous bed or whatever product you have and we'll replace it with another one and customers really like these kind of options because uh, it gives you freedom uh, you know your room or your living space need not be exactly the same uh, for a really long time you can, you can just change around things i think that's what one of the big is advantages we provide against the uh, you know that buying culture where you just buy things once and then you know, more or less you are living with it only for a really long time how does your support team empower the rest of your organization one distinct advantage which customer support teams enjoy is that we are directly talking to the customers day in and day out which no other team is doing in any company being head of customer support at Perlenco my responsibility is not just to ensure that we are just resolving the queries or complaints of the customers just helping them out but also providing the intelligence to all the departments and to the leadership uh, around what exactly are the queries uh, we are receiving or what are the com- concerns we are getting what are the escalations or complaints is there anything which is frustrating the customer is there anything which we should prioritize so that kind of intelligence is super critical for any business because uh, specifically in a startup there are 100 of things to do you know you cannot just try and do literally everything if you try to do it i think you are bound to fail and that's where lot of emphasis is on creating that kind of data analytics or providing business intelligence to all the leaders across the organization so that they can understand what should be their priorities or how they can contribute towards delivering a better customer experience or great customer experience you know literally 360 degree uh, sphere of data is available to us because customers can contact us for anything and everything in fact i'll tell you one more thing uh, i think last year you know we were getting a lot of feedback around the packaging part when we deliver the furniture there's a lot of packaging involved a lot of paper the corrugated boxes and the tapes and everything was there and uh, you know these days people want to be environmental friendly for them it's like a okay, company is coming with so much of packaging material you know it's it's kind of creating a lot of waste and there is some kind of feedback which we get there as well and we took it up we introduced what we call as uh, recyclable packaging now while we do deliver the product the same uh, packaging material can be reused again and again and again and a lot of customers have actually appreciated uh, this initiative which we have taken now covid-19 is obviously the elephant in the room for a lot of startups um the volatility the change in consumer behavior the scale and distance challenges with support have really shaken up a lot of businesses the most evident change of the pandemic on a day to day basis at least for most people has been work from home as a leader how have you been leading that effort our entire team started working from home and in fact literally everyone worked from home in their career for the first time so it was a huge difference in their way of working you know everyone was comfortable only to work from office and we used to see each other face to face we used to interact face to face so the way we used to work or the way we used to interact with each other changed tremendously in probably one night itself uh, we just decided okay one day that from tomorrow onwards we will be working from home and that's it so i think the first thing which we started working on is to ensure that all of our team members are comfortable working from home you know we had to very clearly define that which person is doing what kind of a job so that there is uh, no communication gap we interacted multiple times during the day i personally you know started with interacting at least twice with my manager so that everyone is very clear what is the focus for the day what every individual will be focusing on so that just because you are working out of home and you cannot see each other it should not you know lead to a situation where you do you really don't have an idea what you are supposed to work on so that clarity has to be given to everyone including managers and so to the agents as well so i think that's first thing which we started working on in first couple of weeks we started to fix that now obviously when it's a full lockdown ferlenco which is an incredibly inventory heavy business can't really deliver service or transact with any customers right now this obviously would have led to a lot of cancellations and a real clog of complaints as the lockdown came to an end how do you deal with that 
during these uh, two months when there was a lockdown, a lot of uh, requests which we were not able to fulfill uh, for delivery or pickup or service. What we actively did was we kept on marking uh, every request, you know, wherever possible in terms of the criticality. Now, let's suppose there is a, there's a customer who wants to leave the city. Someone is in Bangalore and wants to relocate back to some other city and he wants the pickup to be done as soon as possible because he won't be available otherwise. So probably that will go into the super critical kind, which is another person who is saying, I placed an order before the lockdown, but before you could deliver, lockdown happened and now I'm not getting. So while that is equally important and obviously we will be getting revenue once we start delivering. In this case, if you compare both of them, obviously the, the customer who is leaving the city, that is super critical. We must help him relocate easily by picking up our furniture and making it easy for him. So that's what we did all through these two months of full operational lockdown so that once we start uh, operating, we can prioritize requests which we have received and serve those customers who have super critical kind of requests. Obviously, every customer is equally important, but yeah, some, you know, you cannot start with serving all the customers uh, in one day itself. So some has some prioritization is definitely important. Uh, and also, I think specifically if there is any escalation or a customer is uh, raising a complaint because of the backlog, obviously some customers had some escalation. So we tried our level best to have a very good coordination among all the operations team, customer experience team, team who do the quality check. In a way, like any and every team who is any which way is connected with the customers. So we made sure that they are on their toes. If there is specifically any escalation or any complaint, we all jumped into and see, okay, what can we pick up? How can we solve it quickly so that we can resolve for our customers as soon as possible? What would you identify as the long-term effects of COVID-19 on customer support? I think uh, at the start of this year, uh, you know, we have been seeing that a lot of companies have started working on uh, chatbot or probably providing self-service options. And there is a way that, you know, it is improving with the every passing year, with every company exploring this area. But I think with the advent of COVID-19 and everyone is like logged inside their home, the need of automation or digitization, I think that is all the more important. Obviously, if you are into, let's suppose, retail, I would say you just cannot visit it any store to get your issue resolved. So even those companies, I believe, uh, would want to solve the customer issues online these days. So I think the biggest ramification is that every company in whatever sphere they are operating, they need to be online today and they need to provide digital tools to their customers so that they can get their queries, their questions, their complaints resolved as soon as possible through a contactless medium. Uh, I think that is super critical. I think pretty consistently, Regardless of pandemic or no pandemic, customer experience heads that I've spoken to consider Amazon to be the poster child for great customer support, right? Why do you think that is? Well, I think the first thing Amazon does is that they have a very good FAQ or a help center based system where uh, just type in some keywords and more or less you get a very detailed and clear uh, terms and conditions, uh, which is easy to understand. Second thing is they also have a very strong chat support available, which is again powered by a bot as well, which tries to answer a lot of your questions and queries. What is one actionable element from Amazon support that you've tried to bring into Furlanco? If in case nothing works out in all my interactions with Amazon support, I think with they all your query in one call itself. I, I, don't, I don't think so. I really remember that I had to call back again to an Amazon support to check up on the status of, uh, you know, my complaint or probably they have to call me again that, okay, we'll call you back after two, three days to resolve your issue or give you a resolution. I think every time I got my resolution on one call, or one chat itself. Right? And I think that's one thing which I personally aim to achieve for uh, myself and for Furlenko, where first of all, we should empower our customers where they can self-support. And I think we have taken quite a big strides in that direction. We provide contextual support to our customers. So if you are using a Furlenko mobile app, uh, there is a dynamic homepage and basis where exactly you are in the life cycle, it will automatically provide some contextual help to you. So for example, if you're a new customer and you open up the mobile app, it will automatically pop up, okay, we have received your order or for example, your order is successful, you're completed your verification, or probably this is your delivery status. It will show you that way. You don't even need to find out, okay, where is my order? What do you identify as Furlenko's moat, especially in a price-sensitive market like India? 
while price uh, you know plays a really huge role in a market like india but at the same time uh, i think specifically in our market and uh, you know because our target consumer base is more into their 20s and 30s uh, i think if you are providing great designs i think customers really like it second is obviously what kind of experience you provide to them because customers may be saving a 100 or 200 rupees on a product here and there but over a period of time you you will forget it but what you would remember remember is that experience the company provided you was the delivery seamless was the inter- installation seamless were the products really easy to use or easy to configure you know if in case uh, you needed any kind of support was it easy to get in touch with uh, someone in the customer support and get you know question resolved you know because experiences get up with people you know if it's a great experience you would want to go back to the same company which is providing you great experience but at the same time if a company is providing you bad experiences uh, you know creating a lot of headaches no one wants to spend that much of time and effort to you know uh, save a couple of hundred bucks but uh, you know go through all that kind of headache and i think for any company who, who wants to continue to grow at a faster pace provide great services to the customer and want to be recognized as a customer centric company i think they should definitely work towards creating uh, great experiences for the customer we've seen a lot of changes happen over the course of the pandemic um digitization automation the remote work how much of that do you think actually continues after the pandemic definitely i think that is surely here to stay because uh, i think it, it you know i think that's the need of the hour as well uh, i think a lot of companies uh, probably have not given that kind of push to their digitization uh, uh, targets but i think uh, because of covid now everyone is pushed into a corner where if you have to survive you have to be online you have to provide services to the customers using uh, all the digital tools available because obviously for example if i talk about for link or even we have competitors you know and if we are not ahead of the curve we might be getting left behind and uh, so you have to be com- competitive you need to use all the tools available at your disposal what is the one actionable support mechanism that you're proud of that you think other companies can undertake um, after listening to this podcast I think one thing which we have been doing relentlessly for last nearly 2 years now is ensure that if we get any kind of bad feedback for any interaction be it on call email chat anything every single bad feedback is being followed up we check with our customers what is the reason for that bad feedback obviously many a times customers give you the of more details around why customers are not happy why the bad feedback but we do go back to the customers we check with them and we don't stop until customers say okay we are happy you know i got the right product right service this is what i was looking for yes there are misses but we go relent- relentlessly to fix what we have missed out on and i think that's what has really uh, made a difference in specifically in the customer experience journey in past two years yeah. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the 20 minute mode presented by worldloop.io. We post new episodes, bonus content and full interviews on our website and social media. Just visit worldloop.io/podcast no more. If you like what you heard, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever else you listen from. It means a lot and it helps support the show. 